Hello and welcome to the new video about the Gauss representation of the gamma function. Okay? In order to derive this representation, we will start off with the definition of the gamma function. The gamma function is defined as this integral, and very important, it's absolutely converging for the real part being greater than zero. So the real part of this complex variable S. And absolutely convergence is a very important thing. You will see why we need that. Now, what did Gauss do to get his representation of the gamma function? He just replaced this e to the minus t with the limited representation of the exponential function, which it looks actually like this. e to the minus t is equal to the limit n to infinity 1 plus minus t over n to the nth power, raised to the nth power. Okay? So we will just plug this limit expression into this integral and we, we get this stuff. Okay. Now we remember that the integral is absolutely converging for a real part of s which is greater than zero and actually we know that this limit representation is also absolutely converging not only converging but absolutely converging so what we can do is we can just take this and this limit expression out of the integral and now take a um, pay some attention because I changed something very important. So the integral here is starting from zero and not going to infinity but to n. We can do that because the n will go to infinity anyway and this right hand part didn't change anything. Okay. Now the next step what I'm doing is actually I will do a partial integration of this stuff. This part will be integrated and this will be differentiated. Now look what happens. Okay, we have the integral from 0 to n, t to the s, so this is stuff uh, that we had before. And here on the right hand side, we have the first part of the partial uh, integration. We took this and integrated it, which gave us 1 over s to the t to the, uh, not to the, but multiplied with t to the s. And here this bracket expression didn't change, because this will be... Uh, differentiate later on and the boundaries are n and 0. Actually if you plug in n you will see this bracket will become 0 and if you plug in 0 you see that this um, the second term will also become 0 and, and this is the reason why we can just throw it out and very important, we I have to mention that, is that even for the later integrals we will always get a 0 here because only this power will be decreased by 1. Actually, you see I'm say, uh, saying this uh, because we're going to repeat this step again and again and again until this power expression vanishes, okay? And we always have a 0 here in the brackets because of this n, okay? And this here is also 0. So this expression doesn't matter anymore for us. Now, let's look at the second part. This minus and this minus do cancel. We get the n here in the numerator, and in the don denominator, I write down the s. I know this looks very, very strange, and I do it because of a special reason, and you will see why I did this, okay? Actually, let, let's again look at this. Maybe I went too fast. We had this expression, and we had to differentiate this. This is a power function, a chain power function. So we first have to do uh, n multiplied with this stuff to the nth minus 1. So we reduce the power by 1. Then we take the inner chain stuff and differentiated it, which gave us this minus n. Okay? So do not wonder where this came from. Now, let's look how we can rewrite this. Because n and s are actually not part of the integrand, or better, not the integrand variable is not in them we can just take them out they are just constants n over s multiplied with n and we have this stuff okay now one could repeat these steps and we will actually do that we will do that for n minus one now let's just have a look and um, just guess what will happen from integrating this we, will, we should get an s plus one here in the denominator from differentiating this stuff, we will get an n minus 1 here in the numerator and this n in the denominator. Let's look if this is right. Wow, we guessed right. 
actually what happened else is that we raised this t to the s and we reduced this part by one okay and we will just repeat this now try again to guess what will happen from integrating this we will get a s plus one in the denominator from differentiating this we will get an um, n minus two in the numerator and an n in the denominator okay let's look ba -bam. yes it's right we are very very proud of you okay so we are going very very good here. and you see we raise this by one we reduce this by one okay this is just what happens all the time and you could repeat that all the time until this thing here vanishes actually you can do that n times and you will end up having this okay and you see we did that n times because 0 1 2 until n minus 1 will give you n parts so this seems to be right here below we have s plus 1 s plus 2 until s plus n minus 1 this also makes sense because we start with 0 going to n minus 1 so these are also n terms and here below we have n to the n terms okay now what is left here is just a simple integral we started at s minus 1 and we went n up so s plus n and minus 1 this is just like we would have guessed okay now let's look what happens here is we just integrate this stuff and we get a last s plus n here in the denominator because of integrating this above expression and we have here t to the s plus n okay now plugging this um, these values in n and 0 you will see 0 will give you a 0 part and n will give you n to the s plus n now let's look how we can comprehend this stuff here Okay, this all here, and if you look at it from this side, 1 multiplied with 2 and until n, what is this? It's the factorial of n. Now here below, uh, I told you we have n of these n's here, so we have n to the nth power in the denominator, and the strange looking product as s plus 1, s plus 2, and so forth until s plus n. So let's just write it down found out that the strange looking integral from the beginning that we got from uh, inter entering the limit expression for the exponential function looks like this we have n factorial over n to the n n s plus n okay this was the part with t which we plugged in and this is just a product I, write, I wrote it down with a minus one and just to have it on one line actually this will wander into the denominator soon okay like here will go to the denominator and you may be wondering why we only have an n to the s here it's because n to the n and this n will just cancel out and we only are left with n to the s so n factorial over n to the s and this stuff now I'm doing a little little small trick okay first of all I'm using this i I will take out look what will happen for i equals zero we only will get s I take this s out and only start this product from 1 and I rewrite this n factorial as a product representation which is just with i okay starting from 1 to n so this is what we do we have n to the s over s okay this is the s which I uh, got from taking the case for i equals 0 and then the rest stays the same and because we had a product over a product you can take this product in front product sign actually this is actually uh, this above thing will give you the n factorial I wrote it this way because uh, we will need it this way later on if you just take out this i out of here you will get i over i and open the bracket and now I interchange their position so um, one plus s over i okay and you see the i's are falling out and this looks quite interesting and we will go and examine this in the next video and i hope you will uh, subscribe so you can see it okay this concludes this lecture i hope you had fun and see you next